Hello again, Brantford. This is Pastor Mark at Brant Naz, Brantford Church of the Nazarene, and thank you for joining me again for Take a Break with Pastor Mark, where I each week I take an opportunity to answer questions or uh, comments that you have about the Bible or about the Christian faith. And today's question is this. Why did it take just decades to, after Jesus' death for the apostles to write about him? Does that not lend to itself to inaccuracies? and to their memories why did it take so long to write about jesus in the gospels and by waiting that long did that cause inaccuracies in their memories well our asker of this question was correct it did take decades to write about jesus anywhere between uh, 30 or 40 years on up to 100 years or so depending on what gospel it is matthew mark luke or john but there's a number of reasons for that and i would offer uh, three of them. Two of them are going to be kind of circumstantial uh, reasons for it. And the final one is probably going to be more closer to the actual purpose of the primary purpose of why it waited for so long. Well, first of all, it was probably too soon, just after Jesus died, that they offered to, that they were able to write about him. You see, they didn't understand who Jesus was. Most people, including Jesus' disciples, they thought Jesus was coming to take out earthly kings and, earthly, and set up earthly kingdoms. But he wasn't. It took them so long to understand that. In fact, it wasn't until Jesus had been crucified, ascended into heaven, and the Holy Spirit came down to them, uh, upon them that they began to click in and they clue into it to what it was going to be. So it was too soon to do it immediately afterwards. The other thing I would suggest to us is they were too busy. They were too busy to do, to do that, uh, to be writing about them. They were busy doing the work of the church. When the Holy Spirit st set upon them, they started out and they started to spread the gospel. Jesus told them, you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, Ju Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the outer ends of the wor wor world. He started small Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the outer ends of the world as he had that there. And so they were too busy doing that. But the primary reason why it took so long, if, you, if we, we say from an earthly perspective, it took so long, even decades, to write about Jesus, was because they had to have a, a targeted audience and a targeted purpose. Each one of the Gospels is written for a different audience, is written for a different purpose. Uh, take the Gospel of John, for example. The Gospel of John was written to show the divinity of Jesus. It begins right in the beginning, the very first verse of the book of John. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word word there means Jesus because as we move down in that first chapter of John down to verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It means Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see there that the primary targeted audience was people who needed to know about the divinity of Jesus. And we see in various uh, verse, through various verses in, in the Gospel of John that their target audience was likely a Gentile, a non-Jewish crowd. So they had to have the targeted audience for that. But doesn't that lead to errors? Doesn't that lead to discrepancies is the other part of this question. Because they waited so long, doesn't that lead to errors and discrepancies? Well, we need to remember that there's four writers here and there's four accounts. So each one is going to vary differently. Let me use this for an example. Four people are standing at an intersection and two cars collide with each other. The police and the emergency vehicles, first responders, they all come and they clean up the scene, and the police start asking for eyewitness statements. Four people give an account of what happened. The likelihood of those four statements being exactly the same are pretty minimal. They're going to be different. So we have, as we have each of the Gospels, the, the account of Jesus' earthly life here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we're going to get varying accounts of that. And so it might appear, as some would suggest, that there is a matter of discrepancy in there but it really all those discrepancies have been looked into over the years and looked at over the years and it's not been seen that way that they can all be accounted for they're just given from their different perspectives because as each writer is inspired they've had this they, they, they've had this inspiration from god and speaking of inspiration from god we believe that first uh, second timothy chapter 3 the 16th verse says that all scriptures god breathed or all scripture is given from God. Now that doesn't mean that God sat the writers down and said, here, I'm going to dictate this to you, now record it for me. No, he inspired them to write with their own personalities and their own perspective in this. So we will get different, different personalities, different perspectives for the various writers of all the books of the Bible, not just the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But we hold from that because God has inspired the Word of God, 
we see from the Word of God, it is what we call inerrant. It is without error. Inerrant, without error. So there is no error in the Bible. Now, some may turn around and say, well, what about this? The account here is a bit different than this account there, and then maybe the numbers are different or something like that. Well, that could be from each person's perspective and each person's uh, targeted audience and purpose for writing the book that they've had in there. But that leads us to what I would add to this is the final part of this. What about today's versions of the Bible? Are they inerrant? Are they without error? Well, we wouldn't hold to them being with inerrant without error. We would take it from the perspective of Scripture as originally given is inerrant and without error. But the Bibles today are not inerrant. The New Testament was written originally in Greek. The Old Testament originally in Hebrew. When you translate languages, words don't translate the same. Grammar structure is different and things like that. So we always get these different translations. But what we would hold to over the years is that for the vast majority of our English translations today that we're speaking in English here, of our English translation today, they're trustworthy. They're trustworthy. We can trust in them. So we see that. Why did it take decades? It was too soon. It was too busy. They were too busy and they had to have a purpose in a targeted audience. But how do we know there's no error in there? God is the one who has inspired the giving of the scriptures and we can indeed trust the scriptures for today. So thanks a lot for sending that question and I would encourage you that if you have a question about the Christian faith or about the Bible, that if you could either put it in the comment box on this uh, video that we have here, this live feed that we have here, or if you want to send me a private message through Facebook Messenger or through my email address at Brant Nasmark, that's Brant Nasmark, all one word, at gmail.com. You can send me that. So once again, thank you for joining me for Take a Break with Pastor Mark as we are outside by the community gardens here. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. And may you experience the special blessing of the Lord this week.